Okay, uh, hello. So, welcome back. And uh, last time we talked about like uh, introduce this like, so called woman tree. And uh, we didn't actually show that this is actually will give us a tree. So, this time we will try to prove that like the woman construction will give us a actually give us a, a tree and uh, I guess just a quick review like what is the woman construction uh, basically we are going to first have a have a subset uh, so I have a base set S here and for the base set we, we will introduce a number of splits here uh, we have a set of splits I uh, denoted by like sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 like, like in this one here and basically split is just a partition uh, of the space set into two parts here so and um, we will say like this split here for the split here they have to be compatible compatible in the sense that like if you pick up like any two of the splits there uh, one of their subsets should have no intersection so, so like in here like it's compatible basically compatible if only if, for example, if I look at uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2, they're compatible you know, because uh, one of these conditions will be satisfied. So, for example, like for sigma 1 and sigma 2 here, I have this uh, S11 and this S, uh, S22 does not, uh, do not intersect with each other, therefore they are compatible. Now I have this uh, set of compatible splits then I can construct a node or like the nodes will simply be I pick like um, a subset from each of the splits and put them together as, as a, a tuple and this is a node so for example like S11, S21 and S31 is a node and, uh, and it's a valid node only if they have intersect uh, I mean the pairwise subset have intersection have non-empty intersection for example like this S11, S21 and S31 um, they apparently they have non-empty intersection so therefore uh, it's a valid uh, a valid node note that like I don't need the uh, all the subsets they have like a non-empty intersection just the pairwise have non-empty intersection so for example let's see um, uh, I, I, uh, I am look, trying to look for a example here. Uh, this, this, uh, yeah, it's okay. Like I, this one, I don't have. Uh, let's see. Like if I can find. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. For example, if I look at uh, this one here. So, for for. This node in the middle, uh, the if I look at the intersection of all the subsets here, so basically like this blue one, the green one, the yellow one, and the white one, the and the intersection of all these subsets is, is empty. However, pairwise intersection is not empty, so therefore it's a valid, valid node. Um, now and then like. We have the nodes here. We define an edge. It simply uh, is um, basically we connect two nodes together if <coughs> they are only differ by one subset. So, for example, like here, I have this example here. I have four nodes here, and you can see like this first node here and the second node here differ by only the first subset here. So therefore, like uh, it has a connection, and the uh, edge we can uh, kind of represent the edge corresponding edge with the uh, the splits that actually differ. So therefore, like uh, the edge here is sigma one. So, okay, this this here here is like just a, a quick uh, review of the burn burn tree. And uh, for more details, you can go back to the previous video. So now, um, let's say uh, we, we want to show that like the Boomer construction actually gives us a tree. So we, we will try to show that uh, going through like a couple steps. First, we want to show that like 
the construction will give us a connect. Uh, of course, like, the construction will give, up, give us a graph because like, we have nodes and we have edge that's already give us a graph. So, uh, and we will show that this is actually a tree by first showing that it's, uh, it's connected. So, the construction will give us something that is connected. So, it's a connected graph. So, the second thing will show that the number of edges is equal to n, so where n is the number of speeds. Mm. This n here is number of split. So we show this by showing that like, um, basically we have one edge, one and only one edge. For uh, each split, so basically we have earlier that, uh, as you can see, like for for here, like for each of this, um, we label basically we label an edge with the split here, and actually we can label that because uh, we already previously assumed that like uh, this edge here will be unique in the sense that I I won't have. For example, a uh, let me give go to another page here. For example, here we label this sigma one as this edge. Like we, we already kind of assume that this is unique, so we are, we are assuming that like there will be no other uh, kind of nodes. For example, like S one one. Maybe I have some S two two and S three two. And somehow, if it's connecting to S one two, S two two, and S three two, in this case, like this edge will also label by X one, right? Um, so we will show that like there's only one, one possible combination like this. So, uh, if this is a valid edge, then uh, or like this two is a valid node, then this two one of the these two won't be a valid node. So therefore, like, uh, we we can have this kind of edge. Um and uh, and then and also then I finally will show that the number of nodes there will be at least like n plus one. So if I have k nodes there, if connected, then I will need k at least like k minus one edges. So now so therefore like if I have n edges, I cannot have more than like n plus one nodes. So actually from connected list actually from from connected list actually from here from from connected list that uh number of nodes will be less than n plus one. So then combining this and this here will have like number of node is exactly n plus one. And also like when I have n edges and n plus one node and uh it's connected then like this this three combined together it has to form me a tree. So therefore all together should give me a tree. Construction give us a tree. So let's start a new page here. So we just want to show connectedness first. So uh what we're going to do is say like, let's say we have two nodes here, let's say one node I call M1, the other node I call M2. Basically, node is just a. Um, um, basically, we will uh, select one, one subset from each of the speeds. So let's say I have the first node here. So it's like S1, I1, up to SK, IK, and SK plus 1, IK plus 1, SN, IN. This is no one here, and let's say I have the second node here, I have S1, J1, 
and SKJK. So this basically, without loss of generality, I assume that like the first node here, uh, I have um, the first k element uh, is different. It's different from the first k element in the second node here, and the first for the rest of the elements they are the same. So here I basically I just arbitrary arbitrary pick two nodes here, like they they are two arbitrary nodes, and both of them are valid, right? So I want to show that these two nodes are actually connect. Um, and of course like this uh. I say it's like without loss of generality. If I like, uh, I have uh, somewhere else, I uh, here is actually uh, different. I mean, same. This part is the same, but this is different. But uh, you you can use the same idea to show it. So like basically, like this, just simple simplify the rotation uh, uh, argument here a little bit to just let the first uh, k of the success to be uh, different and the rest to be the same. Uh, and, and know that like this is different from each other, but like my, uh, it can only be like S1, 0, and S1, uh, 1, let's say. Oh, actually, by the way, I guess I, in the earlier notes here, I, said, I use like S1, 1, and S1, 2, something like that. But it's, uh, let me stick with this one. I just, uh, this is uh, what I use in my notes. So, so that like uh, I won't kind of like confuse myself like uh, as it goes. Um, so now I have these two two nodes here. I want to show that they are connecting to each other. So what we uh, what we can do is say uh, out of this k splits here, uh, and uh, let's say uh, for m one here. First, I look at m one here. All of this uh, k subsets here, of this k bits here, uh, we'll just look for the one subset is smallest. So let's say, uh, let's say S L I L is smallest. Smallest in the sense that like this is smallest. The the number of elements inside that subset is smallest. Uh, among uh, S1, I1 up to SK, IK. So then um, I uh, I I can I, I I will argue that like if I just swap this guy, so if I, I change this guy from let's say I construct a n phi for example and n phi as the s1 i1 and i have sl instead of sl il here i change to sl jl there and the rest i have sk ik and sk plus one i k plus one and so on s n i n here now uh now here they for this all this here uh, this will be the same as M1 here, but I just changing like one, one, uh, one of the subset here like to S L J L, and then of course like this guy like if I compare this N3 here, this node here with N2 here, instead of I have like um, M1 and M2 they differ by like k subsets here. Now it's only differ by k minus one subset here, so it's I I'm getting closer. Uh, to N2 now, like I basically M1 and M3, uh, uh, they, they, uh, something like I, if I draw it, fig, fig, uh, as a figure, factor, was, uh, I don't know, I draw it as a figure, I will have something like M1 and M2, basically I insert a node here, N3, and basically like M3 and M1 will connect to each other. So as you can see, because M1 and M3 only differ by one one subset here, and uh, one split here, and uh, and it's getting closer to N2 because I like, M1 and M2 differ by k, these two differ by k subset. Oh, D 
if uh, by k subsets and the here like only differ by k minus one of them so but actually i can do it like only if like empty is a valid node way right? here i didn't i didn't show that like, empty is a valid node yet but uh, empty is a valid node. I will argue that it's, it's a valid node because I, uh, S L I L is the smallest among these all subsets here. Uh, so let's see how how can I argue that it's a valid node. So it's a valid node only if like um, they have. Uh, basically non uh, pairwise intersection of the subsets are uh, uh, not empty so now if I change from M1 to M3 here I only change one subset here so then I basically like for rest of the subsets I don't I don't I don't care. I, I mean, I don't need to worry about that because I only train this subset. They should already like pairwise intersection. The pairwise intersection should already be long empty. So I need to only focus on this one here. Now, I as I change from SIL from SIL to SJ, S, oh, sorry, SLIL to SLJL. If I look at the intersection here, like for this guy, pairwise intersection with the with these guys here, uh, they I'm sure they have non-empty intersection because like N two is a valid node that guarantee that like here like, also like have some have an element S L J L he uh between the like, S one JL and S K J L here, right? And this guy like as is is M two is a um non oh, sorry, it's a valid node. So this one and the rest of these guys have non empty intersection. So so therefore okay, this this basically this bar is checked. I don't need to worry about that. Now for these guys here I will say they uh, also um have non empty intersection based on the fact that like this is the smallest uh subset here okay. and uh note that previously we have uh s l j uh, s l i l intersect with all this guy right now if after the flip they they do not intersect with like s i s one i one up to s i uh, let me just pick one as an example. This is a, a little bit mouthful. Let's uh, just look at the first node here. Let's say at the beginning I have um move to here. So let's say at the beginning we have like uh, S L um that's I L here uh intersect with like uh S one I one or like maybe I would just simply say S1 0 so let's say I1 is equal to 0 here so at the beginning it intersect so it's not equal to 0 here oh, so not equal to an empty set here now then after I sweep, swap it actually maybe like I make it even simpler here at the beginning let's say like SL uh, IL is actually SL0 so basically IL is equal to 0 let's say with the loss of generality I can assume that and then I ask kind of change that to like SL1 and now it does not um, basically the intersection is equal to an empty set basically does not intersect with S1 0 anymore so uh, when, when would that happen basically uh, let me just sketch something like so i have um originally i have intersection of s1 zero maybe i call it this layer just make it simple like i call this a here and i call this b here so this become b complement here so at the beginning i have a uh, 
uh, A and B intersect. So maybe I start with this. Maybe I use different colors is better. So let's say this is A, and then uh, this is B here. And then of course uh, if I look at B complement here, B complement will intersect with A. Uh, always implement uh, intersect with A. In this case, if I I I I have B is not a subset of A. So what I mean is that like for this to happen only when I have this situation something like uh like this then oh, oh okay I'm sorry it should be the other way one so if I have something situation like this right then the B complement will be this guy here this will be B complement then B complement will not intersect with A so one okay in conclusion basically this will happen only when only when um a is in B basically it's a subset of B so but we already say that like S L here is the smaller set among all the say S1 uh, I1 up to S K I K so this basically it won't happen because like, if it has to be a strict subset of um, I mean for uh, for uh, for S L S L I L ah, okay S L I L is a strict super subset of all this set here then must be bigger than all the rest so therefore okay it just won't happen so okay so therefore like we show that uh, this is this is always can happen by this position in some way that like if I have a situation to know say that um, if like I have the k of the nodes or like any of the nodes or sorry not nodes any of the subsets they differ so I just pick the subsets the smallest one and I swap that subset I will get a little bit closer to the other end so and I can continue to do that like for k more times then I eventually can connect the path and to can form a path so therefore like for any two nodes I any two nodes to be valid they are always connected so therefore the whole graph is connected so so we have uh, show the basically the first one here now let's look at like the number of edges here we want to show that uh, the number of edges is exactly n, where it's exactly equal to the number of splits. Uh, and we first show that, like, um, basically for each of the split here, this has one corresponding edge. So, uh, how do I go back? So let's consider uh, again I, I have uh, I have like uh, a, a, a node I arbitrary pick a node let's say I arbitrary pick a node and here have okay without loss of generality uh, let's say I just say the node is a S1 CO S2 CO up to S and CO so this is I uh, just depend on how I label this subset here. Right? So if like it's, it's not uh, as one seal here, I just rename the subset there, so it doesn't matter. So with the generality, let's say this is a value node, right? And now like what 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 I want to say is like uh for the first, so I, I want to say that for each of these bits here, like there. They they will exist an edge for that corresponding split, correspond, uh, corresponding split. Uh, and let's say like just consider a similar one here. Like again, I like, uh, just arbitrarily pick one split here. So, um, of course, like S one, one 
S2 CO up to SN CO may not be a valid node. If it is a valid node, then I already find an edge. So basically connecting like this N to let's say this N pi here. So this two will be connected here if if this is valid, right? So but however, as I said, like it may not be valid. So meaning that like for example, like after this flip of the first subset, some of the nodes here may not be compatible with this guy anymore. So then in that case, this is not valid. Again, I can assume maybe like the first, like K of them are not uh, compatible with this guy. Let's say I have like S11 uh, up to this like S2. Uh, so I don't need to draw something extra, I think. So basically up to this S2K here, let's say if not compatible if S11. So uh, I, I have S11 intersect with these guys here. SV0 equals S1 S K. Oh, sorry, I, I this a mistake here. K0. Why is it better? One one S K zero that is equal to just an empty set. It does not intersect. So therefore, this is not valid. So, so in this case, this is not valid. Um. Now I I will claim that like since this this is not valid as we just discussed earlier. So how that can happen if I I start with a valid and I flip one of the subset here to the outer one is not valid. It's only happen if basically S11 one, one here, uh, S10 one here is a superset of say S20 here, right? So if I have say S10 include S2 zero here. Now if I flip this S1 zero here, so I flip that into into S1 one here. That's the complement. This basically equal to S1 zero complement. The complement here it won't intersect with like S2 zero here anymore. So this this is the only only case that like you'll have situation like this happen. So now what, what I want to claim here is that I, if I consider node uh, n double pi here as the S11, S21, SK1, and this is a SK plus one zero and SN zero here, this will be a valid node. So if if this is true, then uh, this is a valid node, and this for the first subset for the first split they is not the same way, right? and from the previous uh, previous proof here, oh, sorry, from the previous uh, argument that like the graph is connected, so I know that like this n has to be connected to n pi somehow for a path, so that would be like at least there will be at least one transition from. S10 to S11 and that transition will correspond to a an edge sigma 1. So therefore like I will have at least uh, one edge that will be denoted by sigma 1. So now then I uh, okay. Then then we finish our proof of this part here that I have one or actually one and only one. I have at least one uh, one edge for each of the split. So now like, we need to go back here. So therefore we need to make sure that like this m double pi here is indeed a valid node. 
So it's it's obvious actually. Uh, this is a valid node because like, if we think of like swapping from this flip to here, and uh, we are already like from the assumption that like s one one. Uh, intersect with like s k plus one and up to s n uh, s k plus one zero up to s n zero here. So we don't need to care about uh, the latter latter part of this uh, success here. Uh, so we just need to focus on this one here, and um, and we we know that like we have this situation that like after we flipping S one zero to S one one, that this is not a valid node. Basically, this this S one one does not inter intersect with all these guys here. It only happened with like uh, we basically we, this happened when S one zero kind of like include this include strictly include basically S two zero up to S K zero here, and so therefore. As you can see, like because like this include this guy, what we have is like the the complement of S two C O here. We include S one one here, right? So therefore, this actually imply that S two C O, for example, S two C O complement we include S one C O complement, or in other words, S one one will be included in S two. One and um and so on so forth. I'm actually S one one will be included and S V one and so forth as well. So and then uh, because S two S one one uh intersect with these guys here, right? So therefore, like I, I'm actually first of all, like because of that, like apparently, like S one. S one one intersect with S two one and so on up to S K one, and uh, and also we also need to show that these guys since we also flip flip all these guys now, so we want to show that these guys will also intersect with the rest of this uh, subset here, but because like S one one already intersect with this subset here and also like this guy a superset of like S one one, so therefore this will intersect with these guys here. So this complete the proof that like we will have uh, at least one edge uh, for each of the split. Now then to show that like we have one and only one edge, we also need to show that for each of the split. So we also need to show that like uh, no duplicate edge for each sp split. So let's say if I have uh again um uh, two nodes like n and m pi let's say and uh they differ only by the first subset like s one co s two co and so on and up to s n co and they connect by the first subset like sigma one here s one one this differ but the west is the same. Um now we we need to show that like that does not exist another edge. So meaning that like I cannot have for example like S one zero and connect to S two one and connect to something else. Uh and this one connect to the same uh another node that only differ by the first subset. Something like that. So this this the west is the same. So but I don't care about what is that. So basically, I need to make sure that this cannot happen. So this one cannot happen. So without loss of generality, I I can assume that the they first differ from the uh, second subset here. Uh, but of course, I can differ in other location. But let's say it differ in the second subset here. And for the west, I don't even care actually. Uh, but of course they need to be the same. The subsets here need to be the same. Now this this is this cannot be true 
because if it's true like it means that like this is a valid node this is a valid node this is also valid node this is also valid node and uh, for these guys all to be a valid node they, this means that like I should have um, uh, S10 intersect with S20 right? because I for this to be valid node this this has to be non anti set non anti and I also have S11 and S20 to be non empty and as for S10 S21 to be non empty so for this node to be valid and S11 and S21 to be non empty okay that that exactly violate our compatible uh, condition so for for the split to be compatible we said at the beginning that like uh, one of the subsets among the splits has to be no intersect does not intersect with each other so since like we have all this is like uh, non-empty subset like all this intersection uh, is a non-empty so that uh, violates our like uh, compatible condition and actually as a remark like this is also like uh, where like people try to extend this uh boom and grab a uh, boom and tree basically if you allow to violate this uh compatible condition then you can construct actually not just a tree it's possible to construct a graph and this they call those like a uh, boom and graph and uh, uh but we won't consider here we will just uh, focus on the boom and tree and uh assuming that like the compatible condition always holds so okay this uh we this finish our proof for let's see we have so therefore we have show this now already so basically we we show that like for each of the split we have one edge but also it's only one edge so therefore like if we have n splits there like we have n edges there now we, we we want to show that the number of nodes is uh, at least n plus one. So let's again I start a new new page here. So uh let's see. Again I let's start with like one node here, let's say I have n here. Uh again without loss of generality, assume the node is just like that. Up to S and seal here now um actually we, we just repeat the argument we have earlier because like uh we we know that like we can change any of this for example let, let's say like I, I can change one of this guy here to s11 here now the rest of the node oh, so sorry, sorry the rest of the success here um i if i only change this one of course like, it doesn't matter this is necessary to be a valid node but uh from our earlier proof for the connectedness i think uh we we can we can always change some of these nodes here find a combination such that like this would be a valid node so it means that i can change the first ones to this guy and with some certain combination like this will be a valid node so and I don't care like what is this but from our first lemma or like, like for the connectedness of the Boomer construction so these two nodes has to be connected so therefore oh actually I don't even need that like so therefore okay this is already this is one node here okay this is a node here I don't need I, I, okay I forgot like what I'm, I was a bit confused like what I'm trying to show I, I'm trying to show that like that at least there are at least n plus one nodes so n here is the number of splits um and by the same okay we are already done honestly so this is one node right i have one node here like this is one node here and i can change each of this guy flip each of this split here and each time I flip one of the split here, I can always at least find one uh, valid node there. So therefore, like I will 
contribute one node here and I can do it n times like for n splits here so that give me like n, n nodes there so therefore in total I from doing this I that obviously that we have at least n plus one nodes so uh, okay it's already done actually so uh, go back to in conclusion go back to our summary slides there so what we have shown is that like the graph is connected the Bowman construction gives us a connected graph and the number of edges basically for each of the split we will have uh, we will be able to construct one edge one and only one edge so therefore there will be uh, exactly n edges and uh, we just show that the number of nodes is at least n plus one and because like for connected graph as we uh, said earlier for connected graph connected graph of k nodes uh, there has to be at least k, k minus one edges so therefore going back to logic is that like if I have k if we have n edges then the number of nodes uh, can uh, cannot be more than uh, n plus one so given that we show that like the number of nodes is like bigger than or equal to n plus one and also the number of nodes uh, from connectedness cannot be more than n plus one so therefore we have the number of nodes is exactly n plus one and so therefore like I have like n n edges and n plus one nodes and it's connected the uh, the graph has to be a tree so therefore the like, Boomin construction will give us a tree so I guess I was I'll, I'll end here um, next time I will continue the discussion of Boomin construction basically you consider um, the distance metric so remember like why we, we have want to have this Boomin construction is that like we, we have some this similarity coefficient or, or let's just think of a distance metric maybe I go back to uh, the oh actually I already erased that it, it doesn't matter we have the fin final genetic tree that we try to let's say this is a tree right and we show that this Boomin construction always gives us a tree now we say that okay given if we measure the distance of each of the nodes there um, somehow we want to be able to recover the structure of the tree and that that's our goal so we'll talk more about that next time